discover your second act podcast is hitting a century today is the 99th episode and i am super excited because i have my favorite guest on the podcast today who was also my guest on my third um the the number 3 when i just started off just when i was kicking off my podcast and this man has been in the full journey with me life is a full circle as they say and i'm very happy to invite gautam datta he's the ceo of pvr cinemas and also happens to be my husband i'm very privileged gautam to get you and this brownie on the couch today uh to record our 99th episode because i think we did not do justice when we recorded our third one because i was still kind of thinking who will hear me 10 minutes is good enough and you know from there on i think we have covered a distance of uh recording almost for one hour now so welcome thank you so much and as how as are well. you feeling you can awesome. relax yeah. a little bit and smile <laughs> yeah, yeah, i'm perfectly <laughs> fine and relaxed <clears throat> and uh, congratulations to begin with uh, it's it's been a great journey and i think uh, we're all privileged to be a part of this journey so yeah fantastic well done thank you so much i think these are these uh, golden words that i want to hear from you is at least so gautam um this is a second act podcast and second act <clears throat> as i describe it and i think it has got me 98 different kinds of meanings when i asked our guest uh, what's your second act and i think you've on- also answered in the beginning but i think second act redefines itself when you know there is an act and that that any other act could be your second act and when that act happens that becomes your first act and there's another second act ready and you are a person who has many many acts whether it's your personal front or your professional front right from being a creative person to exploring possibilities So today if I ask you what's your second act how would you answer that uh, the way you explain second act i would say it's a complex uh, question because uh, lots happening lots happening at work lots happening in personal space lots happening uh, uh, becoming a parent of uh, two grown up kids so uh, i i think from uh, all three aspects there's been a huge amount of learning de-learning i would say and uh, a phase where we say that we have to imbibe new ways and pvr let's start with the first one uh, pvr is uh, merging with inox uh, which would i'm sure uh, be a very exciting journey but nevertheless it's also will push every individual including me into a, a zones that i have never sort of experience before so that's going to be a big second act because at work all of a sudden it is going to be redefining uh, uh my working style my way of being everything after 17 years of being with pvr the second uh, thing is about my personal life there of course i would say as uh, uh, you know life takes a new turn and and we are getting into a phase of life uh, which is where we have to look far beyond work in our life yeah. uh, uh it it's again opened and pushed uh, mind boundaries uh, ahead to say what more and i've been a person who've never kind of nurtured um, too many hobbies uh, i i've been a guy who's always just focused at either work or home uh, so it was very important for me to go out and explore something at this age it doesn't come that easy uh, but all of a sudden something that i just enjoyed doing which was work around art and making my home and office look uh, uh, you know different uh, quirky and something that uh, actually being in pvr also helped because uh, my boss ajay bijli is like an epitome of uh, a, a guy who sort of understands design architecture colors uh, materials so well that uh, i thought maybe i should uh, sort of try and experiment new things there so uh, so that's really happening uh, where i'm saying uh, is there a way but the only problem with this 
passion or hobby is that you need a canvas and the canvas is very large you need homes you need people to really support you uh, to be able to uh, sort of give you the leeway to uh, sort of redesign uh, offices and homes which isn't easy uh, but so I'm, I'm begging for those projects uh, some of my friends at work have really obliged as you know and it was uh, those couple of months where I was engaged with that exercise. I was really very, very occupied and happy with what I did. Uh, and then, of course, the third uh, quadrant that I spoke about was the second act around how you deal with kids. And uh, uh, as, as we both have kind of uh, experience, there's uh, learning and de-learning happening virtually every day with them. Uh, from a parent to a friend, that journey uh, doesn't ever cease to sort of surprise us, alarm us, uh, and also delight us from that point of view. And I think that journey is, is yet another journey that we both are taking. And I think um, and that's incredible. So, as I said, lots happening within the second acts of our lives. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So let me come to the first one. And you spoke about your work um, as your second act where you are rediscovering a new alignment, a new style of working, a new kind of leadership which is emerging also within you. At the same time, I also see that, you know, you have moved yourself, pushed yourself to really explore your creativity, uh, whether it is at work, uh, which you just mentioned, or coming to designing homes. So people who are hearing us, yes, um, I have seen that over the last two years, uh, beautiful homes are getting designed uh, by Gautam. Like you said, he's really pushing uh, people to try. Uh, isn't it always about pushing our boundaries to reinvent and to rediscover? So this is a great second act coming. I think um, you just prepared yourself at a time when you could do that, I think you never gave yourself a chance all these years as I know you that you were so driven only to work and to work and to work. So I'm sure that there is something that is nudging you now and uh, you are in this phase of discovery and you keep that on. Uh, I only want to ask you that uh, what is creativity for you? What is that element um, that you describe as creativity? Anything uh, beyond the obvious is, is creativity. Anything, uh, your ability to be able to do things differently, uh, to view things differently uh, is creativity. Uh, the good thing with creativity is there is nothing called the best or the ultimate. Uh, uh, you know, it will just keep changing. So, whether it's about designing or whether this is about uh, storytelling or whether it's about anything uh, and, and it's so important while like science always evolves creativity also keeps evolving so from that point of view i would say a blend of great science and creativity is really the mother of all inventions so uh, it's either sometimes it's only science sometimes it could be only creative but um, the fact is there are just so many opportunities that we get at work uh, dealing with people uh, creating new products, redefining new services, uh, it, it, it just, uh, uh, just moves on and on. So creativity is also, according to me, is about being extremely humble, uh, uh, always knowing that a lot is being done, a lot is being achieved uh, where we uh, are not involved. So uh, the moment uh, you are humble and you accept the fact that somewhere in the world, somebody is able to do things better than you right. uh, is, is very important to be creative because the moment you say this is the best and the ultimate you cease to be creative so whether it's about anything it could be business it, it could be about getting business it could be about learning some new thing you just have to sort of push the boundary and keep telling yourself there must be a better way to do it and that the good thing is better can is, is always the journey, it's never a destination. So from that perspective, uh, creativity will survive and live as long as mankind lives. So I want to ask you, <coughs> I want to ask you, are people born creative or is creativity also something that you learn along the way? 
you learn along the way in the sense some people are in in the in the very uh, uh, very uh, uh, you know bookish uh, uh, you know explanation you could say creative are people uh, like filmmakers copywriters art directors artists uh, painters uh, but i don't believe that's the sum total of uh, being creative creativity uh, is something that we all need at our work creativity is that fire that that wants you to do something beyond what is the obvious and for that you are creative uh, uh, so uh, f- and it's not something uh, uh, that you may have by birth uh, that's something that can easily be cultivated uh, and and you can work upon it so as long as uh, you you have a mind to uh, go out and uh, sort of uh, surprise or delight your consumer you would be creative so uh, so people working in the kitchens are, are the most creative because they every time would want to delight it's the same ingredients but they could dish out something so uh, brilliant that that you would just uh, be all stuck and that's really truly being brilliant yeah i think we experience that with you when you get into the kitchen mm-hmm. very often you do but i often make a lot of mistakes and i go <laughs> wrong that's also a very important part of being creative you will fall you will fail you will will make blunders but the idea is to enjoy the journey and get back and do something better yeah, which you have always done but you're pretty consistent i have to say so don't take <laughs> this humility part of you is something that of course i admire at one end but in second act we always believe in patting ourselves on the back and also um knowing our strengths and bragging about it a little bit because only you can make yourself feel in a certain way and uh, that takes you really far to also have many discoveries along the way do you believe that there could be some things that we cook up in our mind uh which doesn't allow us to really explore explore our boundaries and do you experience that as well as a leader mm, uh, as a person as a human yeah in a manner yes of course but uh, you know uh, i also come from a slightly different school of thought we've often discussed that uh, i believe that while patting yourself on the back is great and your ability to be able to sort of realize what is what is good in you is fantastic but at the same point in time i also am a firm believer that you should also have the ability to step out and see where you lack you know uh, i i deal with a lot of young people and i'm i'm seeing the more they are reading the more they are sort of listening to people they realize that the only way uh, to be uh, on the path of success is to keep churning themselves on through positivity yes it's very important i agree you should not bring yourself down you should but at the same point in time uh nobody is born perfect we all have our shades uh, of black gray and white uh, when i say shades i mean abilities of of having core strength uh, mediocre strength and weaknesses now the question is at some point in time your ability to be balanced i think is more important than just outright going on uh, with the belief that i am great and whatever i do is brilliant your ability to be able to pat yourself to say hey this i think i'm good at this is something that i need to work on and this is really my weaknesses which i need to really learn and de-learn and come back with a better answer i think the balance of knowing who you are is extremely important uh, and i think um, to my mind as long as individuals if we begin to see that balance we'll be far better uh, human and as well as great workers i think i um, love your perspective and i think we've also spoken a lot about it um i am a firm believer of staying positive on what i have as positive and go for it uh, but i do agree that i think we need to identify all the shades that we carry with us 
And uh, that helps us to discover, I think, uh, an utmost potential, which probably, you know, we just have it somewhere, but I'm not able to. You spoke a lot about um, our own children and, you know, the youth. <clears throat> and I know that um, you have a young team and we have those two beautiful young people at home who are constantly nudging us um, through your life learnings. Um, is there something that you want to tell the young generation today uh, on work culture, ethics, um, how to really make a success out of what they do? See, honestly, uh, uh, on the face of it, it's a very simple uh, question. A lot of people have asked me this question. A lot of people have written books around it. Uh, it's perhaps the most uh, sought after question. And uh, the beauty is that the answer does not change largely. Everybody talks about discipline. Everybody talks about tenacity. Everybody talks about detailing, skill set, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the, the honest reality is that, uh, you know, uh, as they say, God is in details. And when your mind is focused on achieving something, uh, that is the time when you are open to learning something new. Learning perhaps the most obvious things. I, I've often written about it and often written and then kind of squashed the, all my points saying, what's the point? Because uh, can we go out and start preaching this to our kids? They know it. Uh, uh, who wouldn't know that it's great to be disciplined? Who wouldn't know that we should all eat healthy, uh, but we don't. Uh, 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 the fact is, uh, something in life should get triggered for you to start learning and imbibing these most obvious things. So I do not believe in uh, wanting to repeat, while sometimes uh, whenever you meet someone or you have, are in conversation, you tend to start repeating the same things. but. Uh, you realize that uh, those learnings are completely rejected because the person on the other hand is just not open uh, about receiving it. So uh, there's enough being spoken about it. Uh, there are people who have done so well, uh, who are learned, they've written books and so uh, it's all there. Uh, you know, I, there is no point for me to repeat it. The fact is, I always keep waiting for a juncture. Can I create a moment where the recipient is open on receiving this uh, points? Uh, when that happens, I think magic happens. As we've often seen, there's a turning point in everyone's life. Yeah. Now, what's that turning point? Yeah. It could be your girlfriend, it could be uh, your... Um, uh, your, your failure at work, it could be a humiliation, uh, it could be anything, but there, there has to be a turning point in someone's life to start imbibing uh, the learnings which are all over us and, you know, uh, and, and as I said, there's enough and more. The, the day you want to learn something, uh, Google is there. Uh, books are there, you just sort of search and you get enough. The fact is how many people are searching for it. And once they get the answer, would, do they have the tenacity to follow that answer? I think rightly said, because I think it all falls under our own domain of what we want to do best with an advice that we seek. Um, and uh, I think there are a lot of people who seek advice from you. And as you celebrated your birthday yesterday, Gautam, uh, you had the full team at home. Mm. And um, they have this opinion that you are such a tough taskmaster at uh, work. But when they saw you back at home, this, they, they were quite surprised to see you relaxed and having fun. So is it important for leaders uh, to be the two people or where the, <clears throat> the way I see it is that we should be the same person at work and at home? But how do you see that? See, sometimes uh, what happens is who you are uh, changes because there is a designation, there is uh, a certain, uh, uh, what should I say, expectation of what you are supposed to be doing. So when you get to work, it's not like Gotham going to work. It's actually also about 
a CEO coming to work. So I can walk in at 12. I can walk in at 1. I can walk in. I may not, may not want to go to work. But what kind of example am I setting? Uh, so uh, the important thing is when you are at work, uh, you, you have to deliver to what the management wants you to. And there is a pressure. Uh, we are all humans and sometimes you have to be uh, logical. I, I'm a tough taskmaster, uh, toughness only comes through when you believe that something is not happening the way it should happen. Uh, 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 that's it. And, and uh, if, if somebody would turn around and say he is illogical or he, he would scream at things which perhaps could have been avoided, I, I would be very wary of that. And maybe I'm also guilty of that at certain point in time. But largely, the, my whole focus is to be very, very logical and somehow manage to trigger an individual or a team member to be able to go out and find a bigger purpose for themselves. Because we often forget one thing when you deliver or when you achieve anything. Forget me that individual, he also feels brilliant about it. He does not feel great when he does not end up achieving a great thing. So at, at some, uh, at a point when I am getting tough with an individual, the point could be that, you know, he feels as if I have cornered him or pushed him. But the same individual, when he delivers, you should see the smile then on his face. Because he believes that he has achieved something and that uh, gives him a great confidence. And we are all, as I said, we have different shades in us. Uh, when we wear a track versus when we wear a suit, it's, it's very different. Uh, in fact, the ability to be able to leave work um, uh, uh, in office uh, and be a different person, I think is a good facet to have. Uh, people overall do appreciate. In fact, people who carry uh, you know, uh, work the same philosophies, the same mindset into something else. I would say it, it'll be very tough for that individual, that leader, and for the colleagues and the entire team. So I, I think uh, uh, we are eventually all friends working together. And uh, from that point of view, uh, they should know that if a conversation has happened, it's on a certain topic, there's nothing personal about it. Uh, uh, it is about a work, again nothing personal about it, that work and the topic gets over, uh, back to square one and we could be out there having great fun and conversations around it. And I think you are that person who has built in your team as a family and uh, I don't think that last so many years, more than two decades that I have seen any birthday go by when your team doesn't drop by and um, is around you. So I am sure that you are that leader. They know the difference, um, you know, when they are able to also perform thanks to you. So as they say, empower Actually, you they empower. have made me this leader. Honestly, I've been, uh, uh, I, I wrote an article yesterday on LinkedIn where I said, I, I see myself as a product of God's grace and within that God's grace comes my team members. They've been so kind and so giving. They, they worked hard and I benefited a lot out of them. So they're actually an extended part of my family. But, and it's also a reality when your family member uh, does not perform to the level that you want them to, you will get upset. So I do get upset. I, I do want them to push themselves harder because I really want them to succeed. I really want them uh, to be uh, shining out. So when uh, in the past they've, they've been uh, some of the uh, you know team members who've gone out for better uh, avenues, mm. I felt so proud and happy for them and that's exactly <laughs> the reason. Simply because they are a part of you. When they do well, you think you've done well and, and uh, that's the feeling I have for them. Always in gratitude to what they have done and given to me. You're a very uh, compassionate person. You're a very kind-hearted person. 
Um, and I think being tough was not about being tough on them, them, but also a lot that you take on yourself. I've never seen you taking it easy. You really don't give yourself a chance to relax when things have to be delivered. So it goes on to you as well that the leader that you are, first you set an example for your own self. And then, of course, uh, like you said, what kind of example are you taking to the office? So honestly, I, I wouldn't want to uh, answer this question simply because I, I don't think it's fair for me to answer because, I, you know, I could say that I'm setting a great example of walking, uh, um, I walk the talk. But honestly, I would be delighted to know what my team members and colleagues and peers think of how I work. Uh, if they grant me this, I, I would uh, take that with folded hands. But honestly, I sometimes, as I said, we, we believe that we're doing everything right. Mm -hmm. We believe that we are being logical. We yeah. believe that we have the right to sort of get upset because they have not delivered. But I've also realized it's a part of that growing up and maturity to say, maybe that's just half truth. We believe in our own versions a lot more. Uh, and I always believe what you do, uh, others are the recipient, not you yourself. So it, it'll be unfair for me to sort of say anything about my style. Uh, uh, it is best sort of, uh, sort of uh, spoken by others rather than me. Uh, well, we are seeing it. Uh, <laughs> your, I think your charisma and uh, your love and affection is very well there with the team uh, and they will, of course, uh, endorse it here. Uh, I want to know now, just taking it a little bit on the easy side, um, when Gotham relaxes, what does he do? I, uh, I think. I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I make my think? Excel sheets. Uh, and I, I watch I, I watch uh, some bit of television uh, and uh, uh, yeah I go out for cinema I love cinema and I, I love to that cinema experience the big screen experience I feel that's um, uh, brilliant just helps you unwind uh, and, and spending as much time with kids and you and everyone at home is fantastic. Uh, cooking is also something that I love. Um, yeah, all of that. Uh, lots to do and lots more to um, lots more coming. But please, uh, people who are hearing us, don't think uh, when you take take time off yourself. Just take time off yourself. Keep the thinking hat somewhere else. So, um, Gautam, <clears throat> you are a movie man. Is there any movie which has um, left an impact on you, or you? Uh, derive some kind of an inspiration from that movie when you think of it and why? Lots of them actually and, and the good thing with content is just kind of um, uh, they always keep coming back at you. Sometimes the stories, the movies that really stay with you have nothing to do with your life but there could be some journey, some dialogue, something that that just may resonate. So. Uh, movies like Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, uh, Bucket List, uh, Rockstar, uh, they are all great stories and great cinema and uh, that just stays with you and, and the list is endless, it just goes on every time uh, you, you sort of go out and watch a film. There's something within the story that always resonates with you and that's beautiful. Yeah. So. You know, you, in the interview, you're coming across as a very intense person. You have a great sense of humor and great uh, one-liners that you have, right? And I think people who know you very closely know that you use extremely beautiful, I don't know from where you get them at the right, right place at the right time, those one-liners. So tell us a little bit about... See, I was a very, 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 um, what should I say, below ordinary uh, person. I was not a well-read guy, I never used to be on stage, I, I, I was not good in study. So my, uh, my IQ was fairly low and that's what I believe it still is. So when I'm talking to others, or uh, I want to give them references which can really seep in a lot easier. So actually I'm not talking to them, 
I'm actually talking to my own self to say how how can I make a situation, a problem or a solution so relatable that he gets it. And that kind of prompts me to look around us uh, and, and look for, uh, you know, anecdotes of life, which I also call truisms of life, uh, which, which is happening around us all the time. And can I give them relatable, uh, you know, uh, stories that, that really gets in. So that's where perhaps it comes in. Uh, never thought of it, never worked on it. It just sort of God given, I guess. So let's talk about a few. One that I remember is Bago Me Bahar Hai. Hmm. That you always use. Why do you use that and what reference? Well, the reference is very clear that when you're making a presentation or when you're, you have an audience, he should always uh, sort of agree to your point of view. You cannot go up there and start giving him any gyan or point that is of disagreement. And that's where I cut to this song, uh, the old song, which goes, Bago Me Bihar and the lady says, Haan hai, Aad Sumbar hai, and she says, Haan hai. So uh, I always believe there's a great management uh, lesson there that when you are talking to someone, when you have an audience, you must have yes, 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 yes. Invariably, the fifth, the most critical thing, and the fifth most critical thing in the song was, <coughs> Tume mutse pyar hai. And she turns around and says, Haan hai. Mm -hmm. So that's how it kind of works. And, and that's what I thought. Uh, people may just get that. Uh, significance of how that song plays out and how our interaction with an audience would play out. Okay, so this is, uh, so tomorrow when you do a course on pre presentation skills, I think that's how your slide will start. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> they are, at least have to start to agree with the point I'm trying to make. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, Gautam, um, this is really like a wrap up of all the podcasts that I have done so far. You are my special guest and you will always be. Um, this journey would have not done, I, I would say it wasn't complete without you. Um, because last time I think we did a very short one and then so many people said we want to know more about Gotham and so here it is. Uh, are you delighted to be on the 99th podcast? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So we are meeting on the 100th. Uh, on a meet and greet with all the people who were on my podcast. Um, it's such a special day. We got them, uh, you know, I have introduced uh, like a rapid fire, okay, but we don't have a hamper, but um, still I'd like to know more about you because there are so many questions and you're a great one-liner man. So uh, here goes. Um, success for you is? Mm, happiness, uh, contentment. Great. Um, one life mantra that you always remind yourself with? Mm, I don't know enough. Okay. Um, you always refer to also thinking of failures. Um, one failure that has made you the man you are today? So many. Uh, till the age of uh, 21, I never tasted success in anything I did, anything, sports, studies, girlfriends, money, fame, nothing. So actually, uh, that you'll need another uh, one hour session with me to be able to <laughs> count those. I've got just too many of them. Uh, I've spent 27 years of my life with you, so I know them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay, so I mean, for the younger kids today, and of course, two of us. Um, what is that something from your life that you would want to tell them to be happy people from tomorrow? Tenacity, I would say. I, that's something that I've always believed in. I believe if you're, uh, you have the tenacity and you're honest to what you uh, want to do, uh, I think you will get there sooner than later. 
and there is no compensation to hard work. And there are no shortcuts in life. You may get temporary uh, success, but you will lose it all. Uh, you know, you need to build a strong foundation if you need to build a big castle. Is as simple. Uh, loyalty to you is uh, being true. Uh, to be honest, a lot of uh, I, if, if somebody is loyal to me, he needs to be honest. And uh, one thing that you want to say before we just go away today. Mm, that's been wonderful, and I think I'm very proud of what you've achieved and it isn't easy. I know what uh, corporate uh, life does to all of us, the way we think, the way we do things. Uh, it's remarkable that you've, you've been at it. Uh, you've shown all uh, the broad points that I keep talking about being successful. And I think it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's brilliant that uh, you've got there and these hundred episodes are just remarkable. Great, absolutely. So thank you and um, everybody who is hearing us, this is Gautam Datta and me signing off today uh, for our 99th and uh, we will keep coming back with more episodes. Um, I have to revamp my podcast, I'm thinking loud now, what else can I bring in? So thank you for listening for all the 99 and uh, this has been a, such a great journey. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.